Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome to this edition of Race Face Spotlight. Today, we're going to travel from Florida out to Arvada, Colorado, where we find 18-year-old driver Cassidy Hines. Cassidy, how are you doing this evening? I'm doing good today, Rod. How are you? I, I'm doing awesome, man. You know what? I can't believe, you know, that you're actually 18 years old. I remember when we first met, we were in Las Vegas at a quarter midget race. Yep. And it's, here, it's pretty crazy. It is crazy. And here we are. Now we're going to be talking about your 2021 racing season. And we're going to be talking about pro late models and even a couple of races in the SRL series. So um, let me just highlight for the viewers what you were able to accomplish this year before we get your take on it. She won a race. She had three top fives, nine top tens in 12 starts. That's pretty awesome. So give us your take on the year, Cassidy. Yeah, um, I'd say my season was pretty good for the pros. It was my first season in the pros. And I don't know, I thought it was pretty good. I had a couple of SRL starts. And the SRL races really helped me. I feel like I learned a lot, especially at Kern, because those tracks, Kern in general is a really big track and there's a draft there. So I feel like I learned a lot there. And then as for all of the rest of the prolate model races that I ran in the different series, like at Madeira and at Roseville, um, I feel like those ones were really helpful too. I did get one pro late model win this season. So that was really exciting. Um, I'm hoping to get a couple more next year. So we'll see. I feel like the pro late model series this year was really good for me and I can't wait to see what next year brings. Well, Cassidy, the other thing too is, you know, you followed in some pretty big footsteps here being at Nate Car Motorsports, being in that car. I mean, we're talking about, you know, you've kind of um, stepped in where the two main drivers for Mike have, moved up into the series. Matter of fact, they're going to be racing for the ARCA West Series Championship, and that's Jesse Love and, and Joey East, and only five points separating those two. And for you to have kind of followed in and, and really, you know, carried the ball very well. I mean, what's your opinion as far as, you know, being able to do that and being able to, to go out there and compete with Nate Clara Motorsports? It's awesome. You know, I was the first girl to win for Nate Clara Motorsports. So that's really cool. And I don't know, I feel really accomplished with that being the first girl to win for them and the first girl to win at a lot of different tracks around the country. And so I feel like being a part of Nate Clara Motorsports is definitely a big thing for me. And especially to follow in Jesse Love and Joey East's footsteps. That's really cool. Yeah. And, and, and for a lot of you that don't know, when she talks about the first girl, guess who raced at Nate Clara Motorsports? And that would be one Haley Deegan. So she pulled off some things that are pretty outstanding. And, and if that wasn't enough, you were racing your pro truck back at Colorado. And again, you had two wins there. You had a fast dash win. You had five top fives. And again, nine top tens in 10 starts. What an awesome year. And I think you set a couple records at Colorado, didn't you? Oh, yes, I did. Um, last year, I was the first girl to win two pro truck races. And this year, I beat my record. And I now have four pro truck wins altogether. And I'm still the only girl to win there. So that's really cool. Um, and I got two quick times in the pro trucks this year. So just to add on to all of that, I mean, I feel really accomplished with this season so far. So let me ask you something, Cassidy. How tough is it to switch from a pro light model back to a pro truck? Uh, it's not horrible. I mean, we've really tried our best to make the pro truck as similar to the pro light model as we could. So we really, um, we wanted it to handle. I mean, you can only do so much with a pro truck compared to a pro light model, but we wanted to make it handle as similarly as we could. So it wasn't a big jump. Um, it was kind of just, I had to really keep in my mind what I was driving to make sure I knew I was driving the pro late model or the pro truck. And the other thing about the pro truck too, is that you worked on that pro truck all the time. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> now I'm going to bring something up and I know you didn't bring it up, but I got to bring it up because you brought a pro late model with my Nate Clara Motorsports out to Colorado um, to, to be able to race out there. I mean, you, you, you blew everybody away in, in qualifying. Um, and then the boys didn't want you to play. Tell us a little bit about that. 
So we weren't planning on racing the Pro Late model when it was out here for the ARCA race. We were planning on just testing it on Friday to help. I wanted to see how it would feel on my home track because that's really cool. Um, and we wanted to help Joey to get a feel for Colorado National since he was going to be running the ARCA car on Saturday. So we weren't really planning on racing it on Saturday, but then I had brought up to Mike, I was like, hey, the late models are racing. And he's like, oh, they are? We should race the pro. And I was like, okay, well, so we talked to the owner and he was like, yeah, yeah, that's no problem. We weren't going to race for purse. We weren't going to race for points. We were just going to show up and take the trophy if we want. And we practiced and the first practice we were like, five tenths faster than everybody. I mean, it. keep in mind, it's a different late model than what the late models are written here. So obviously it was gonna be lighter, faster, whatever. And so um, they didn't really like that for practice. And they had told me that I could only qualify and run the slow dash. I couldn't even run the fast dash. I could only run the slow dash and I couldn't run the main. And so I beat them in qualifying by only like half of a 10. It wasn't even that much. And so I ran the slow dash. Obviously I won that. Wish I could have ran the fast dash, but we weren't able to do that. And so, I don't know, I think it was kind of a blessing in disguise because the main event for the late models that night was really hectic. And I feel like we wouldn't have made it out of that race without a scratch. So I feel like it might've been a blessing in disguise not to race that day. All right. Well, she's being a good sport about it. She's a much better sport about it than what I was. So the other exciting thing that happened this year is you made your super late model debut. Want to tell us a little bit about that? Yes. So our debut didn't go exactly how we had planned it. I'd qualified, I think, seventh for my debut. And so that wasn't bad. And then that night it was a double feature. And <clears throat> the super late model had made it all day in practice on, on Friday and then all day practice and qualifying on Saturday. And then I ran five laps in the first main and the rear end broke. So it ended our night really early. So you had enough time in the car though. How cool is a super late model to, to, to actually drive? I mean, can you tell a major difference between a super and a pro? I mean, yeah, I think it just depends. Um, I couldn't really tell a difference, but I could tell it was faster. And especially like watching them, since I couldn't race it, watching the mains, I was watching them and I was like, wow, those are really fast. It doesn't feel that fast to me in the car. And my parents are like, seriously, it doesn't? Like, no, I had no idea. Like, I had no idea I was going that fast. And so I think... Honestly, I don't, I don't feel a big difference, but looking at them, you can tell a big difference. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, racing keeps you extremely busy, but you're now a full-time college student. So how is that going so far? Um, <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> um, I'm managing with college. It's getting better now that I'm on the off season. At the beginning of the school year, it was really difficult because I was trying to balance racing and school and especially, you know, August, it was like the heat of the season. So we were in California a lot, traveling a lot and racing a lot. And so it was really difficult for me to balance college life and racing life. I'd have to take my schoolwork to the track with me. And when I wasn't racing, I was working on homework. And so that was really difficult for me to do because I'd be get out of the car, go in the hauler, work on homework, get in the car, go race, get out of the car and go back to the hauler and work on homework. So it was really difficult. But right now it's getting a little bit better. I think I finally got a hang of things. And I feel like, I don't know, hopefully for next season, it'll be I'll have it down to a T. <laughs> well, did you ever go down in one of the corners or something and go, oh, my gosh, now I know what the answer to that question is? <laughs> unfortunately no <laughs> okay well that's a good thing. that's a good thing and, and you know the other thing too um for for a lot of you that don't know is is Cassidy in high school was like this super student I mean she was honor society national honor society I think you were student council president you were you were a mentor to like freshmen coming in 
And so, you know, that's a big adjustment when you're, when you're, and I'm just going to say it like it is when you're the big girl on campus and now you're going to college and it's like, there's not even a lot of people here that I know, nevertheless, a lot of people that know who I am, but I got a feeling that the racing is going to kind of put you on the map, even at the college level. We'll see. I don't know. We're kind of getting there. People well, are starting to notice. <laughs> here's, here's the easy way to do that. It's just one day, just, you know, work it out with security and everything to where you can actually take your super late model and drive it and park it on in the parking lot and then walk into one of your class that will get people noticed <laughs> that'd be really cool i could see it happening right now <laughs> oh i could see that happening too As a matter of fact i'd be willing to orchestrate that <laughs> so i know that we're we're early here and and we're you know we're we're i shouldn't say that we're in november uh, but it's kind of early to be talking about it. But you, can you give us a, just a little glimpse of what your plans might be for 2022? So we're not 100% sure on what we're going to be racing next year. We haven't really talked about it. But for what I do know, we are going to be racing the super late model in Colorado. Um, and we're going to more than likely be doing that full time for all nine races that they'll have. And then we don't really know what we're gonna be racing in California. It could be a pro late model or it might be a super, we don't really know yet. Um, so just stay, I don't know if we'll keep you updated. <laughs> stay tuned. Yes. For big announcements coming soon. The other thing I wanna talk about is, you know, um, your family is so involved. I mean, your dad works on the cars all the time. And, and I know even when he goes out to, to like Madeira or Kern or with, with Nate Clark Motorsports. It, I've heard Mike say, you know, several times is, you know, your dad, Mike is just like one of the, one of the team members. He just jumps in there. Your mom is amazing as far as, you know, taking care of all the plans and, and she is the best at getting pictures and, and helping you to promote yourself. And it seems like that at Colorado, your family has this special connection with fans there. And I know that you guys have done several promotions and giveaways and talk just a little bit about that and what that actually means to you. Yeah, um, the fans are a huge part of my racing. I love the fans personally. I love seeing all of the little kids running around the pits here in Colorado with my pro truck shirts on. That's awesome, especially when we're not racing. Like we'll be going to a super late model race and we'll just see a bunch of little kids running around with my pro truck shirts on. Like, that's really cool to see, especially when you're not racing, to know that they're supporting you. Um, we've done a lot of giveaways with them. We recently got stuffed cows and they have the little CHR logo on the shirts. And we gave those away to the first 50 or 75 kids, whatever we chose for that night. And so they'd get one free and we've given hero cards. We've at the beginning of the season, we would give away um, bags of candy and we'd have like little CHR pens and flashlights in them. And so we we've done a lot for the fans and I feel like the fans have done a lot for me. They definitely put the fun in racing and they keep everything interesting. I love seeing all the fans, especially like walking around the pits and like you're Cassidy Hines, you're the pro truck driver. Like, yeah, that's me. That's cool. And, and, and we, we, if we flash back to those quarter midget days, when, when I first saw you in, in Vegas, I can remember one of the things that, that I remembered out of that was I was like, man, how many little brothers and sisters does she have? Because every time that I looked at you, you were flocked with these younger kids that were like glued to you. And, you know, I, I know that you and I have this little inside thing that's been going on for years now. That's, it's called the look. And, and I can tell you that I can remember there, there was a race, I think you got taken out or something like that. And, and you know, I, just, I walked up to you, was going to pat you on the helmet, you know, just to say good luck in this next race. And I looked through that visor and I saw the most intense set of eyes. And I was almost afraid to touch you on the helmet. I thought she may punch me. Um, but that thing is, is, I think, what makes you really special. You do get that look and have that intense and I, I think that, uh, um, you know, you've got a super bright future in front of you. And not only the things that you do for all the fans at Colorado and, and, and the involvement, like I said, with your parents and everything, but you're also involved with the Friends of Jacqueline uh, Foundation. And you've adopted, I think, two kids. Tell, tell the viewers a little bit about your involvement with Friends of Jacqueline. 
I love the Friends of Jacqueline Foundation. They are <clears throat> so supportive of my racing. Um, Dennis and Jacqueline herself are just amazing people. Um, I have adopted two adoptees, um, London and Alea, and they have, I think, three or four younger siblings. And so, like, we hang out. I'll call London and Alea and say hi. Um, we've done Christmas. And I don't know, I've just grown really attached to them. I mean, they surprised me a couple days ago. They came over to give me my graduation gift from May, and they were like handmade um, airbrushed vans. And they're really cool. They had my name on them and they had my number on them. Like they went all out with them. And I just, I don't know, I feel really lucky, lucky to know them. And London is such an inspiration because of the cancers that she has. Yeah, I saw the shoes, the shoes were cool. Oh yeah. I, I, I just wondered if they made those in a size 13. <laughs> I know. Uh, <laughs> I almost don't want to wear them because I don't want to get them dirty and ruin them. Right. But you you guys have always been really big with, you know, different memorabilia things. And I know right sitting behind me now, you know, there's one of your tumblers. There's one of your hats. I've got sweatshirts and T-shirts hanging in the closet. I've got a plaque from you. I mean, you guys do an amazing job for that. And, and I think that, you know, that's what would make you a great brand ambassador for a company out there. Um, that's looking to get involved in racing, not just from the fact that here's a here's a female, which there are very few that have the ability to be able to compete in, in a mostly male dominated sport. And you have that ability. And when it comes to the off track stuff, I think you smoke most of the boys. So um, so Cassie, one last question here. Um, what would the perfect marketing partner look like for you? Oh, that's a tough one. I don't know. I'm kind of, I'm leaning more towards the side of buckle because I wear buckle so much. I practically live in their jeans 24 seven. And so I feel like I would be a great person to rep their brand and be like, Hey, I'm wearing buckle at the racetrack. Get yours today. You know, it's, I don't know. I feel like buckle would be the best fit for me. Um, Lululemon would even be a great fit because I work out in their clothes all the time. I live in their stuff too when I want to be comfy. Um, there's a lot of places out there, but I feel like Buckle and Lululemon would be the best. All right, Buckle and Lululemon. If you're out there and you're watching this, call her. <laughs> okay, I know that you want, you've got a special gift that you want to give away to all of your loyal fans today who's watching this, and that's a free Speed Zone Mall membership. Yes, Cassidy has her own mall. So Cassie, tell them a little bit about that and where they can go to get that free membership. Yeah, the Speed Zone Mall is a mall that has, it's an online mall. You can get it on the app for Apple or Android, um, or there's a website and they have the Buckle store. They have a ton of different stores on there that you can go and buy stuff and you even get a discount on them. You'll get like 3% cash back or whatever, whatever the store chooses. Um, and we've actually used it a couple of times for other stuff and we've gotten some percentages back. So I feel like it would be really useful and you should go check it out. So there you go, fans. She's wanting to help you save money on the things that you're already going to buy. You don't have to buy anything extra. She just wants to help you save money. How cool is that? So again, Cassidy, I want to thank you, but I want to say one last thing here. If you are a marketing partner out there, if you're, if you're a company and you're looking for a good brand ambassador, look right in front of you. Here she is. She is amazing at the racetrack and she's even more amazing when it comes to promoting brands and what she does off track. So um, if you're interested, go to CassidyHinesRacing.com. There you can visit her fan zone. You can get a free hero card. You can sign up for a digital newsletter. You can watch her podcast. I mean, she's so involved in everything. She's doing a spotlight interview today. We do race face driver updates every single week. She'll make a great brand ambassador. So go check her out. Last but not least, Cassidy, do you want to thank anybody that's helped you um, kind of help support you this year? I would like to thank my parents for all of their support. Frontier Restoration, Fort Worth Screen Printing, Commit to Fitness, Driven Race Gear, Nate Clower Motorsports for all their help in California. Friends of Jacqueline Foundation and Race Face Brand Development. 
All right, there you got it, everybody. Again, if you want to stay connected with Cassidy, go to CassidyHinesRacing.com. You can follow her on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Make sure to check out her fan zone. Get your free mall membership and sign up for the digital newsletter. It doesn't get any better than that. So Cassidy, thank you for being with us tonight. Um, stay focused on your college studies and you know we'll be looking to, to reconnect as the 2022 season gets started. Thank you. All right, so everybody, there you have it. Cassidy Hines, Arvada, Colorado, pro late model driver, pro truck driver, super late model driver, great brand ambassador. So again, I wanna thank you all for watching. Check back with us in two weeks for the next Race Face Spotlight interview. Everybody have a great evening.